Thanks for staying with us. Still on insecurity, men of the Benue State Police Command Outfit of Operation Zenda, headed by Commander Justin Geberindia, arrived at Savanshan Town in Katsina Ala, where they uncovered another mass grief of victims. We wonder that some of this visual in this report may be disturbing. The two suspects, Ondusi Tesi, alias Bob Sese, 23 years, and David Okashima, alias Cash Money, who is 22 years, were arrested in Oshun State after both fled following the killings, kidnapping, and armed robbery activities carried out in Kastina Allah, local government area of Binwe State, in less than three years. The two suspects who were secondary school dropouts are members of a 10-man criminal syndicate who took men of operative zender around to uncover shallow graves, both in dry and abandoned wells, where they kept their dead victims to conceal their nefarious acts. Among the six dead decomposing bodies uncovered so far, we are three males and three females, including their own wives, killed in January and April this year. Four years and three, one day down. That's how many? That is four. So of all the people who are not killed so far, how many so far? The, how, all the people who are not killed, the people who are not killed, my hand is on top. Mm. I mean, I four. My hand is on top, sir. Your friend, you can't cash money. Okay. My friend, um, <coughs> five. five. Now, who be your leader? For here. Yeah. For this uh, killing one, you do so? Uh, this guy, sir. Nah, this one be the leader. I'm the leader. Yes, are you married? Yes, sir. How many children? Yeah. Berindia confirmed the arrest of one of the accomplices who stated that effort is on to arrest others and suspect's father who seemed to have instigated the act. David uh, Ka, what do you call it? Kashima. Kash, Kashimana. Oh, or Kashima. Oh, Kashima. Yes, uh, A.K. Uh, Kashman. Kashman. As a part of this horrendous crime. Uh, just this the other place they just bury a young lady there. So it's unfortunate. Well, uh, simply the challenge is a uh, uh, security intelligence gathering. You have a lot of hiccups, generally. Let's get you see ongoing. Okay. And uh, we hope many of them will be apprehended the first day after the law. The suspects further gave six names of their gang syndicate. They, however, stated that four had been killed. The suspects also claimed to be working for Azunto a militia and late Ghana second in command for several kidnappings, killings of security agents in Sankira Axis. I'm very happy about this work. Uh, in fact, we are so excited. I am the... We in short. Uh, the, I, I, I am a colleague. We are very happy. The deputy chairman of Kastinan La Local Government Council, Agba Thomas, who witnessed the situation, said justice will not be served for the two notorious criminal elements who had made life unbearable and famine activities impossible. This bro has been terrorized this area. Since we came to board, we couldn't do anything because of those boards. This is the only project we have. Since then, they have been killing, kidnapping. Every week, they used to kill more than 10 people. Quite sad as we urge the Benue State Police Command to keep up with the good work and ensure that the perpetrators are brought to book. Now, as concern over insecurity grows, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Nigeria has called for support and attention for internally displaced persons, which is growing daily. The senior internal relations officer who was on a course visit to Plus TV Africa Newsroom in Lagos highlights some of the emotional trauma victims face despite UN support. Here is Plus TV Africa senior uh, correspondent Kayo de Lade uh, in a chat with him. The UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, targets about 600,000 internally displaced persons in the year 2020 for aid and support. 63,320 refugees and asylum seekers and about 60,000 refugee returnees. As of 2021, over 2.9 million IDPs are in Northeast, leaving some deficit to be handled by Nigerian government and other donor agencies. 
According to Roland, the agency is committed to making a difference in the lives of these persons. We at units here work for people that are forced to flee their homes, or be the Nigerians that are driven out of their homes, out from their fields because of insecurity in the northeast, but also in the northwest and in the middle belt. We try to make a difference in their lives. We try to protect them and support them and help them restart their lives in a safe environment. While expressing commitment of the refugee agency, he shares his experience with these set of people who are daily traumatized due to violence by some non-state actors. Internal displacement is really a, a serious and growing issue in Nigeria and it's, it's really worrying. Uh, it's worrying for each and every man, woman and child that uh, loses his or her home and that has to find a, a different place to stay whose lives are interrupted, disrupted, who may not have a school uh, in the first weeks or months, who may not have access to a field, who becomes dependent on humanitarian aid. Yes, it's a growing, growing phenomenon, unfortunately, uh, driven by violence and by other conflicts. And we estimate that about 2.9 million uh, Nigerians are internally displaced in your nice country. He also condemns attacks on this vulnerable demography, which in his view must be protected always. For the refugees, units here is working to, to make sure they find a safe place away from the border. So if something happens in, in the area of the border, they uh, are uh, not uh, touched. So that's why we supported uh, the, the government in Nigeria with uh, the building of four settlements for the Cameroonians in the south. But when it comes to the IDPs uh, in the northeast uh, and the northwest, uh, yes, their camps are often uh, attacked uh, and uh, security uh, is not enough. As the internet is still buzzing with comments about Plan B, which has to do with fleeing the country due to increasing incidences of insecurity, the call here is to change the tide by providing adequate security to prevent a worse humanitarian crisis. Kaya Deladeinde, Plus TV Africa. Now, internally displaced persons face double risks every day and they need all the help they can get to be able to survive, which is a call for all to do the needful. Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency Nimasa says it has completed the Deep Blue project aimed at tackling insecurity within the country's maritime corridors. Director General Nimasa Bashir Jamo made this known as the agency received the special mission aircraft at the Air Force Air Wing Ikeja. The Nemasa boss arrives at the Air Force Air Wing of the local airport Ikeja with his team. He awaits the about to be celebrated project. Minutes later, the much awaited special mission aircraft of the Deep Blue Project, otherwise known as the Integrated National Security and Waterways Protection Infrastructure, is received and inspected by Nemasa. After the inspection comes the unveiling of the aircraft. Bashir Jamo expresses excitement over the completion of the project. So far so good. This is the last piece. Is it? This is my happiest moment in this my assignment. When we came in, the assignment given to us by the Honorable Minister at the inauguration of the board was one assignment. Go and make sure that you complete the Deep Blue project. And today we are here to receive the final piece for this project. I am given four year term in less than 13 months we have completed the task. So we will go back to our principal and ask for another task. The menace of maritime insecurity is an age-long challenge in the industry, hence the timeliness of the special aircraft. October we had 10 attacks within our exclusive economic zones. In January we recorded only one, February we recorded zero, March we recorded one, 
we are yet to record in April. And the remaining, is, the remaining is going to be unveiled during the commissioning on 21st of this month. We are now taking Nigeria to another level in the international community. We are changing the narratives as far as the issue of maritime domain is concerned. The high-tech assets under the Deep Blue project will not only deal with piracy and armed robbery in the territorial waters frontally, but also respond to the increasing sophistication of maritime crimes, exclusive economic zone up to the Gulf of Guinea. Big ups for Nimasa for such an effort to tackle insecurity surrounding maritime sector. The Blue project is funded by the Ministry of Transportation and has already deployed its integrated maritime security infrastructure. To Ekiti State now, the non-academic staff of Federal University Oyekite marched in support of the decision of the governing council of the institution to terminate the appointment of a former registrar of the institution. The union leader said this at the end of a congress of the union held in the main auditorium hall of Federal University Oyekite. Details in this report. Non-academic staff of the Federal University, Oye Ekiti, jubilate over the suspension of the former registrar of the institution, Mr. Odusonya Olatu Boson, and the former bosser of the institution, Bolatito Akonde. They are also calling on the governing council of the school to terminate Odusonya's appointment. Chairman of Non-Academic Staff Union of the institution, Ayodele Ojumola accused him of single-handedly recruiting 500 staff without recourse to laid down principles. The immediate registrar, the former registrar of the institution, has been, has been the architect of the crisis, the problems of FOIA. But lo and behold, shortly, the long hand of regulations and statute caught with him. And um, the council of the university, in their wisdom, polished him accordingly. First impression that some unscrupulous elements, faceless individuals, people who are miscreants, because by the addressing from that uh, media that you saw, you imagine that that is not, that cannot be staff of Federal University. Meanwhile, they praise the newly appointed Vice Chancellor Professor Fashino Abayomi for introducing developmental changes in the school in a short time. When Plus TV Africa contacted the suspended bosser of the institution, Bolatito Akonde, to hear her side of the story, she denied all allegations of financial recklessness. We have tried our best possible to ensure proper management and application of the university lean resources. Looking at both our campuses, Oye and Ikoli, the rate of development in the shortest time is overwhelming. Moreover, these allegations ought to have been directed to the former vice chancellor because I'm not the approving officer and I couldn't have made payments without approval. The management of the Federal University, Oye Ekiti, has distanced itself from the ordeal of the former registrar of the institution and its former bossa. They insist that the said termination and suspension moves were taken by the governing council after petitions were written by some staff of the institution. And as a wrap now, but still, let's remind you to follow us on Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. And just subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Ubuku. Thanks for watching.